Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You want in South Asia news line and hear the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 13th of October. PM Modi calls for peace amid Israel Hamas war. Activist raises concern over migrant crisis, terror launch pads in POK. And Afghan families live in tents in Herat Street for fear of more quakes. And now for all the details, amid the ongoing Israel-Hamas war, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said that terrorism anywhere in the world is against humanity and asserted that it is time for peace and brotherhood. Addressing the inaugural session of the 9th G20 Parliamentary Speakers Summit in New Delhi, PM Modi said that we have to remove obstacles in the way of global trust. He also said that consensus not being achieved on the definition of terrorism was saddening. The Prime Minister had earlier this week condemned the attacks by Hamas and reiterated support to Israel. ऐसे में टेररिज्म को लेकर हम सभी को लगातार शक्ति बरतनी ही होगी। Meanwhile, Speaker of the Canadian Senate Raymond Gagne skipped the presiding officer's summit of parliaments of G20 nations. This comes in the backdrop of souring diplomatic ties after Canada accused India of involvement in the assassination of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. However, India has outrightly rejected the claims, calling them absurd and motivated. Well, the first batch of 212 Indian nationals returned to India from war hit Israel on Friday as the first chartered flight under India's Operation Ajay touched down in capital New Delhi this morning. Indian government on Wednesday had launched the repatriation operation in response to war between Palestine-based terror group Hamas and the West Asian country Israel, which hosts around 18,000 Indian nationals. The Indian embassy in Israel has said other registered people will depart for the homeland in the subsequent flights. Actually, security is very good. It is very good security. So, we don't feel scared because Israel's security is very strong. But this was a fear that something will happen, that a terrorist will attack, so we get a little scared. We get a little scared from our country. But we were very scared. The first time we heard the sirens, it was a different experience. As you know, today is the first flight of Operation Vijay. Today is the first flight of Operation Vijay. And this is completely in keeping with our Prime Minister's vision, our Prime Minister's determination that our government, his government, will never leave any Indian behind, any Indian anywhere in the world that finds himself or herself in harm's way. Our government, our Prime Minister is determined to protect them, bring them back home safely. Also in a similar operation, 254 Nepali nationals also arrived in Kathmandu early on Friday. The remaining 249 citizens who have registered with the Nepali embassy will return in subsequent flights. However, repatriation of the dead bodies of 10 Nepali students who were killed in attacks by Hamas will take much longer time due to legal process, Nepal's foreign minister N.P. Soth said. Israel and Hamas are engaged in a deadly battle after the latter conducted a deadly incursion in Israeli territory. Israel, in retaliation, has pounded the Gaza Strip, which hosts the designated terror organization. A ground offensive measure by Israel is also looming the Hamas-controlled territory as Israel mobilizes tanks and military vehicles near the southern borders. Moving on, two days after one of India's most wanted terrorists, Shahid Latif, who was killed in Pakistan's Punjab province, a top police official has alleged the involvement of a foreign intelligence agency behind the killing. In a presser, Punjab police chief Usman Anwar said the attack was planned outside Pakistan as part of a conspiracy against the state, the Dawn News reported. He said the investigating agency is in contact with the foreign office, which will soon name the country behind the killing. A top commander of jaish e mohammed terror outfit, Shahid Latif, was the handler of the sixth terrorist involved in 2016, Pathankot Air Base attack. 
He was killed on October 11th by unknown gunmen in Pakistan's Sialkot, where he was residing following his release from an Indian jail in 2010 as part of the UPA government's effort to repair ties with Pakistan. And Kashmiri activist Junaid Qureshi has raised concern over the migrant crisis in POK due to Islamabad's repressive policies, while it also continues to breed terrorism in the region. A report. Junaid Qureshi, the director of European Foundation for South Asian Studies during the UNHRC session in Geneva, raised the issue of migrant crisis in POK due to Pakistan's economic crisis and repressive policies. He highlighted the Crease Migrant Boat Disaster, in which more than 300 Pakistanis and 135 people from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir lost their lives while they were heading to Europe illegally for a better future. He said lack of jobs and basic infrastructure in POK has fueled a sense of deprivation, while Pakistan continues to treat the region as a colony. 300 people of Pakistan paid this kind of money and this is one instance we know of because the boat capsized. Running away from their own country because they have absolutely no avenues. The, look at, the, look at the, the, the currency rate of, of the Pakistani rupee. It's, it's, it's in a spiral downfall. Qureshi also raised concern over Pakistan's sponsorship of terrorism as a policy and cross-border attacks in India's Jammu and Kashmir by terror groups, which enjoy a safe haven on the Pakistani soil. As a matter of fact, terrorism in the country is still being uh, cultivated. Uh, there have been recently attacks in, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, in Kokanak. Uh, two of those uh, terrorists were from Pakistan administered. Jammu and Kashmir. Um, they were trained in mainland Pakistan. Uh, at the same time, you also see that uh, people uh, under shabby house arrest, uh, the Masood Azars, the, the, um, the Sayyid Salahuddin's, uh, the Hafiz Sayyid's, all, all of them are, are still there. Nearly a week after earthquakes and aftershocks struck Afghanistan's western province of Herat, some residents in are still living in tents outdoors due to fear of more quakes. Multiple earthquakes destroyed entire villages in the war-torn country, which has long relied on foreign aid that has dried up since the Taliban took over in 2021. Families are since then living in tents. As they say, their homes are not strong enough to encounter earthquakes. از روزی که اولین زلزله شد ساعت 5 روز مدت 5 6 اون روز میشه که این خانواده ها هم اومدن به این جسکون گزین شدن و چون که خونه از اینو او قدر مقاوم مقاوم نیه از ترس از زلزله اینا اومدن به اینجا سکونت گزینن در سی حال جوزی دوال بشد همین زلزله گفت دادم من از غم دارم ناجورم گفت دادم مرکش کرده بچا کاور also, eight agencies have launched fresh appeals for funds to deal with the fallout from the earthquakes. Afghanistan has faced crippling cuts in the two years since the Taliban took over and much international assistance, which had formed the backbone of the economy, was halted. The fisheries sector in India's Jammu and Kashmir is witnessing a boom and providing employment to a lot of youngsters who are setting up their own trout fish farms with government assistance. The fisheries sector in India's Jammu and Kashmir is witnessing a boom with a large number of people setting up their own trout fish farms with the government's help. Abdul Rao from Katwa, who got 6,000 fish seeds under the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampata Yojana, has reaped huge profits. The fish cost around 500 to 1,000 rupees per kg in the open market. Apart from seed and feed, the fisheries department is also providing farmers assistance in funding. The scheme that we have given is free of cost. In the past year, we have about 9,000 fish seeds. So, there are many benefits of this. I have about 2,000-3,000 fish के करीब जो है हम मैंने अभी तक जो है बेची है तो बाकी अभी तक मेरे पास अवेलेबल तकरीबन तीन क्विंट दस बारह क्विंटल जो है अभी अभी फिश जो है मेरे पास अवेलेबल हैं 
Trout fishing is also one of the great tourist attractions in Kashmir Valley and it is known as an angler's paradise due to the abundance of the fish. ये सारे यूनिट फिशरी डिपार्टमेंट के एक मैं बहुत बड़ी अचीवमेंट मानता हूँ जो यहाँ पे हुई है क्योंकि ये एक तो एम्प्लॉयमेंट दे रहा है एक लाइवलीहुड और इनकम का साधन है यहाँ के यूथ को Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.